Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Leon from No More Lines. In this video, I'm going to show you a new and improved version of the concatenate function, which I created in Excel VBA. This concatenate function fixes two of the main problems with the original concatenate function. One of the problems is that you have to select every individual cell within a range. Also, another issue is that you're not easy, easily able to add in a delimiter or a value that separates out every single cell or value within the formula itself. So I'll show you how the original concatenate function works. So I'm gonna type in concatenate. I gotta select A1 comma B1. And you see here, it takes Mary, Sue, and Lewis and it combines it into a single value. But you see that I need a space in between Sue and Lewis. So to add that, I have to actually add in a space to it as one of the values. And you see here, it actually will separate it out to how it's supposed to look. Other problem is that I cannot actually uh, select as a range. I have to select every individual cell because if I do it as a range, it will throw an error message. But I'm gonna show you my new concatenate function. It actually allows you to select as A1, B1, and it puts a delimiter there. And I'm going to show you how to set that a little bit later on. But when I select it as a range, it works the same way. So I'll show you how I created this. So this particular function that I created is called concat new. It accepts a total of 10 variables. The first one is a required variable. It's called combination. It's a range. The other nine are optional variables. And it's to where if the variable is null, then it basically sets the range as nothing. That's going to be really important a little bit later on. In this particular function, there are three uh, variables that I need. The output itself, which is going to be what, what, what I'm going to use to actually combine all of the names within that value. And the value itself is going to be the actual range. The next one is going to be my delimiter. And I, I'm going to set it uh, below. And the cell range itself is going to be a subset or a piece of the range for each one of our 10 variables. So next example, the, the cell itself is going to be a subset again of the combination. So here I'm going to set my delimiter as a, a space. And then basically for all, all 10 of the variables, all 10 of the ranges, I have to set uh, a loop uh, here. So basically it's going to say for each cell, which is a subset of combination, inside of combination, my output's going to be whatever my output is. In this case, in the beginning, it's going to be a uh, blank. It's going to be and the cell value itself, which is going to be in this case, uh, a one. Then it's going to add in the delimiter itself, which I set here, which is blank. And it's going to basically do it for each one. So here. So so to explain it in a literal sense is saying that basically I'm going to take a one. I'm going to add a delimiter to it, which is a space. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to take Lewis and I'm going to add it, add it to it. And then at the end, I'm going to add a delimiter at the very end. And it's going to do that until it gets to the very end of it. And then from there, what it's going to do is that it's going to look at all the other non-optional variables and say that if, if the next variable is blank, and in this case, I set the default value as nothing, it goes to the very end of the, the function. And at the end, it does a cleanup. It basically gets rid of the length of my delimitative value itself. So in this case, it actually will do a left function of the output itself. And it's going to take away the number of characters that the delimitative itself has since I'm adding it to the end. So it's essentially a cleanup. And then for all, all 10 of, of the different variables, it's doing that. 
Now, you're probably asking, can you add more? Yes, you can add as many more as you want. You can add as many optional variables as you want to. You just got to make sure that you're accounting for them at the very end. And all you're going to have to do is just take these four lines of code and just add it to the very end of the formula itself. One important thing with this is that you want to make sure that you're not putting in any uh, values. Basically, you want to make sure that, that you're not skipping any of the optional variables. So, so you're going to want to actually want to put in an optional variable in sequence. Otherwise, the function, it may not work correctly because of how I have it set up. So I'll take this function here and I'll copy it down and I'll show you that it actually works for all the other ones. But you see here that I have a delimiter here as, as equals to a space. I can change it to, to another value if I want to and, and I can recalculate this and it automatically changes it. So this is one really cool thing about this formula is that it automatically updates. And I can change it back and it goes back again. And one last thing I want to show you is that I can actually set this between A1 and B10 and it actually will take all the names and combine them all together because in, in this case, again, this A1 through B10 is actually the first uh, the first parameter in this um, in this function, which is combination. So again, it, it actually accounts for the entire range and how I reads it is that it basically starts at A1, it goes to B1, it goes to A2 and B2 and it goes all the way down until the very end which is uh, cell B10. So yeah, hopefully this was very, this was helpful. Um, I actually thought this was really cool. Um, it's a little cumbersome but I think once you have it hard coded and you have it set, it's really easy to use it. If you like the video, please be sure to uh, leave a comment. Of course, like it, uh, share it with others. Hopefully, this is helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber. I'm going to try to make more content like this. And uh, thanks for watching. And God bless.